Welcome everybody to another edition of the CBSI Presents Indie Spotlight Series. We got a great group of people here with us tonight. We got the author and lead artist for a fantastic Indiegogo campaign. And we are here to talk about a book called Blue Bastion. But before we get into that, I want to introduce my co-host, Jack DeMeo, a.k.a. Mr. Bolo. How's it going, buddy? Man, it's going well, Brian. Channel is expanding. I'm happy to be here again for the Indie Spotlight Series show. And of course, there is no Indie Spotlight Series show without Mr. Indie Spotlight Series himself, Andy Tomberlin. How you doing, my man? Oh, what's up, Jack? Glad to, uh, glad to be back and glad to have uh, these two on the show. Uh, I think it's going to be a good one, and I think we're going to learn a lot Um about what we uh, what we what we can see, what we can expect here, and uh, I can't wait to get to it, Brian. So without further ado, we have the author and creator of this book, T. E. Marshall, with us tonight. So let's go ahead and introduce him. How's it going, T. E.? Hey, Brian. Great to be here. Thanks for having me on your show. R really excited to show you guys, some, you know, what Blue Bastion is about. Been working on this for year and a half, and Rod joined the team about, what, six, eight months ago, Rod? Yeah, I think so. I think so. Thanks for, for inviting me, too. And yeah, and it's a excited project. Uh, I think it was six months ago, ago, I think. And you sent me an email, right? I think you saw it on the campaign of Detective Dad, some concept art that I did. And you asked me if I had time to to make some concert for you and send me the the plot of the story. And I, I really like the project because those days I'm I'm getting old and I'm starting to choose better what kind of story I want to work. Because I, I work in a lot of projects that it's okay, you make money, but in the end you say, yeah. That's so exciting. That's so artistically change, challenge, challenger, challenge it for me. And in Blue Bastion, I saw some things, a mix of sci-fi with uh, fantasy kind of thing, and got me interested. And Travis is very, very nice person too, because that that's for me is very important. Uh, the team that you work together is need to be nice guys. Otherwise, it would be a nightmare to work. So, yep, I'm very happy to be part of this team. Yes, Rod's our lead artist, and right now he's managing, what, three other people on the team? Oh, yeah, yeah. I manage um, Carlos Eduardo, that is making inking for me, uh, Art Cida, yeah. that make colors, and Priscilla that are making logos and icons and the letters of the comic book. And we are all friends here in Brazil because I'm from Brazil, we all know each other. We work it in similar projectors, projects. Then I, I Travis uh, come from video game uh, business and he asked me to me if I knew some people and talent people and trusted people too because this is something that that sometimes is hard to find uh you can find very talented artists but that don't deliver the job stop to to play games for a week <laughs> and then get back to to draw board and but those guys that i i put together in this team is very professional yeah, it, uh, I, I, I can tell just from the little bit I've heard already, you guys are really vested in this thing. Um, you've talked about some of the key ingredients that it takes to, to drive this thing forward already and in a good partnership, working with good people and a great story. You wouldn't have, you wouldn't have jumped on board at TE not had the right thing. Uh, you know, it's, it's what it sounds like to me. And, and going back to that, TE, talk to us a little about uh, about the story and, and tell us how this how this idea came about and, and, and give us a little bit of background on it. Oh yeah, sure. So Blue Bastion really started with one character. Uh, his name's Euclid Cypher. About a year and a half ago, I really just wanted 
to create something that was a nice blend of sci-fi and fantasy as a this awesome comic book. So I have all these ideas that I've had in my head for a while now as a game designer. And I wanted to put all of them towards a narrative. So something I can tell story-wise, because I've done writing for video games in the past, but I really just wanted to own my own world that I could uh, build characters into. And so the first thing I did was just come up with who my character was going to be. And something I've just dabbled in, not really with seriously, but just I find it interesting is tarot cards. And there's this one tarot card called the Chariot. And that was the big, the starting point for uh, Euclid Cipher, the hero of Blue Bastion. And so if you'll allow me, I can uh, share with you right now my screen. Okay. And I show you kind of how we developed Euclid uh, to become this hero. Yeah. You can see it? Yeah, yep. yeah, yeah. Now we can see oh. So what I have here was after I decided uh, this character would be Euclid Cipher based on the ch uh, Chariot Tarot card, I uh, worked with Rod on, gave him a script draft about, and the whole first issue kind of introduces Euclid as the hero. It brings in some of the supporting characters that ended up coming uh, to life as I was writing Euclid's journey in this issue. And so with that first issue after Rod read it, the first thing we did was have him come up with some different alternatives for how the character could look. So after I provided him some references, these were uh, three of the initial concepts and we all kind of really gravitate towards this hairdo with, with the side part right here. And you can see here, we developed the idea of the flame sword coming out of his left hand gauntlet. Because one of the main crucial ingredients of Blue Bastion is this is a world where pretty much all citizens of the capital wear uh, grain gauntlets. And that's a special type of gauntlet that runs on, it's called a grain core. And you can use that to channel all these magical abilities. So Euclid's uh, left hand gauntlet uh, is channeling the flame sigil and he's able to spawn these various swords, which I really liked that Rod had uh, put together. And from here, we explored even further uh, based on the one we liked the most. And we kind of tried some different armors on and started developing his companion, Fiona. So one of the cool things about Blue Bastion is with these gauntlets, you could create these robotic animals. And so they're actually physical. Uh, even though this one right here started a little ethereal, we kind of, in the next version you'll see, made Fiona more physical looking. And that one is right here. So this was the final concept. So we ended up doing some color tests and this is how we finalized who Euclid would be. And so you can see on his two gauntlets, there's different uh, symbols we've created to represent the different elements he can channel. Right here is the construct logo. So that's actually the name of uh, what these robotic animals are called. They're called constructs. So this is Fiona and Euclid. There's no vehicles in Blue Bastion, so everyone uses their uh, constructs as almost a personal vehicle companion. And in Euclid's case, uh, she pulls his chariot because he's a chariot racer after all. Wow. You can see from <laughs> I'm mind blown by the art. In, in the concept right off off the rip and and my brain is just going I'm, I'm hearing video game background I'm hearing I'm hearing comic I mean dude I'm I'm, I'm gonna let you keep going but uh yeah that's this this is some cool stuff oh thanks right here we have um two of our finished pages full color fully lettered so when We'll start with these. I usually draw on the Word document, uh, which each panel should showcase and what the dialogue should be for each panel. And then Rod's also seen, I like to scribble like very poorly drawn like layouts that he sometimes uses to help in, uh, influence his layout. But really Rod's a master of the panel and he'll look at my little scribble and then make something beautiful right there on on the screen. Yeah, and then yeah. 
I, I like to see his cats, but sometimes I look and say, man, this, this doesn't work in the page. And then, no, we need another panel here, another panel here. And th this is the kind of thing that I like in comic books, this change of ideas between creators. And, and Travis is very open mind to any proposal that I, I give to him. So it's so cool, man, the way we, that we work together and, and his hair is not something that you can see day by day. And yeah, and the project challenged me a lot because is, I, if, you, if you look in comic books, you barely can see some animals. It's always superheroes, it's always someone fighting. Animals is very, very hard. And this book, you have a lot of animals. So for me as an artist, it would be a challenge because it was a long time that I didn't draw any animal. And, and we worked well together because he has a background of video game. I worked with video gaming for seven years. I worked in Australia for two years in a video game company, AAA. So this is why I, we did this kind of a concept step by step until we find the final visual of the character. This is something that is not it is not done in comic books also. You start to you start to draw the page and then you got to know the character and you start to develop the visual later on. It's very, very hard for for uh indie comic book project to do the concept art first and then the page. This is for artists so much better. But well, please keep going, Mark. Mm -hmm. So what, what you'll notice about these pages, this is um, the introduction to the Path to Kingship chariot race. Euclid Cypher, the hero, his main motivation is to win this chariot racing championship. And it's, pretty intense it's a three-year-long championship against some of the top competition in all of capital city and if you win the whole championship you become the king of blue bastion and blue bastion is this planet somewhere off in space it's this original fantasy planet we've designed and it's run by six elders inside of what's called the elder temple and then one king. So the six elders and the king work together to run the society. We're going to see how that works later on as we go through the series. But we're drawn in with Euclid here who really wants to be king. And so he's been racing chariots his whole life, pretty much ever since he joined the academy. And so all citizens in Capital City go to the academy. And that's like a 20-year program they're released at age 28 and they have to decide what they're going to do from there. So Euclid's now doing this race here and uh, we introduce him right here. This is Grimswald Dagger, who's a news anchor or field reporter. And he actually has a role later on. He's got some surprises behind him. What was really awesome was I love seeing how Rod had the chariots just coming out of the page here. And so this is Euclid and Fiona racing against Euclid's rival, uh, Marty Shackle, and his uh, Black Panther construct, Sable. And so we can see Marty's approaching him. He wants to ram Euclid, and Euclid pulls back. And then right here, Euclid uses his uh, fire gauntlet to shoot off a flame ball that uh, takes out Marty. And then he eyeballs this next jump that you see him go over here. So this is just showcasing some of the chariot racing action, which is going to be one of the highlights of the series, but a lot of it's also going to take place inside the temple and around the entire world. I want to look at the world almost like Game of Thrones style. I've designed a whole map. So Blue Bastion is almost all water, and it's got this one continent, and that continent uh, is basically seven to eight times the size of California. It's all concentrated. And I've designed all of the geography and been working on a document to outline what the city buildings will look like and what the costumes look like in, in each area of the map. So we really wanna bring you into the world with Euclid and his race. And then from there, we're gonna expand out to all these other characters living in this world. And we really just wanna 
grow the series over time. So you can see here. Yeah. Liquid actually lands the jump. And then we're introducing kind of how the gauntlets can influence the constructs here. So Fiona tells him he needs to speed up and Euclid engages her into overdrive. So since she's like a vehicle, an electrical machine, he's able to uh, increase the power output. And you can see it. she says here, I'm in overdrive, but then she says, I can't see, it's too much. So we're demonstrating the gauntlets do have a limit. They run off a of battery and they can overheat. So his gauntlets starting to overheat here and that's kind of a cliffhanger. Uh, is he gonna make this next jump or is he pushing it a little too hard? So I think those pages are great. I love the art on it. I love how vibrant the colors are on it. I also like those small inlet panels that are inside. I like how it kind of breaks up the symmetry of those panels. And I can't say enough good things just from these three pages I've seen. What They're also up on the Indiegogo page right now. Fantastic job on, the, on those pages right there that you've shown us. We worked on these for a while just to get them just right. And it's all thanks yeah, to Rob. Yeah. I think I think was... I was working in another comic book too, and, and I was doing this very slowly. Think about narrative, storytelling. That is, that is the main course of our comic books. And we did some layouts. I did some layouts, was sent to Travis. Travis said, no, no, it's not working. Then I sent another layer. So we just finished here. This page is color when it's absolutely everything in the right place for the reader who follow the panels and getting the action panel by panel by panel by panel like the old school kind of comic books not just big panels big panels big panels another big panel and another. i like the small action like you said like a small panel showing uh, fiona face then a bigger one then a small one i like this to broke the narrative. I agree. And so many people are going to those big splash pages, which are amazing, but you get so much more emotion and detail with these small inset panels. You're getting kind of that close up view of the characters as well as that action shot, backup shot. Um, and I think you really translate well to the reader. I'm kind of blown away in those three pages that we've seen. And we know from comicbookinvest.com and the Simplements Comics YouTube channel, we get people talking all the time about funding, crowdfunding, and getting in on books early. We've talked oftentimes on this channel about the desire to go ahead and cover different areas of the market that aren't often covered by other speculation websites. And we're going to talk about one right now. Now, TE, this book is available on Indiegogo.com, correct? Oh, uh, yes. Yeah. So we're on Indiegogo for the next uh, two weeks. We're still funding. If you want, I can give you a rundown of the page. Absolutely. All right. So if you look at my screen. Basically, what I did as I went to Indiegogo, I keyed in Blue Bash in the search engine. This is us right here. The art you saw was a variant cover or colorist uh, completed. So now that we're on the page, let me just show you. Right now, we're about 12% funded. Uh, we are set with a flexible goal so even if we don't reach full funding all the funds that we've received we're going to use to continue producing pages until we can finish the book no matter what the book's getting finished it's just if we don't get fully funded right away it's going to take a little longer either way we'll have this book done uh rod and i have basically going to work together in the long term here we we love this series mm -hmm. and if you want to you know get in now help help us out so we can hopefully get the book out sooner uh what you can do is come check out our page we have a few different reward tiers you'll notice they're all themed after different roles that citizens play in blue bastion so the harvester is actually one of the people who works in what's called the grain fields in blue bastion and that's uh harvesting what's actually used to power the gauntlets, the grain. So if you go in that harvester level, you're gonna get a PDF copy of the book. And so the book's gonna be a double issue at 40 pages. And then if you want the actual physical book, 
Uh, you can come in at our $15 tier, tier. You're going to get all 40 pages. And what we're actually going to do is we're going to stamp on your book a cool little stamp to represent whatever perk you had. So one thing I've noticed is a lot of people on Indiegogo or Kickstarter don't like that they necessarily sometimes have to purchase a perk or a book for $10. And then they see the same book on the comic book shelves for $3. Uh, so we don't want people to have that experience. That's why the books we're selling here are one of a kind. They're not gonna be the same versions of the books that would be sold in comic book shops. And you're actually gonna, it's, going to represent you know what tier level you came in at so that it feels a little extra special and this is a metallic ink stamp on the cover some of the other stamps and reward levels we got here are the celebrity and assassin levels and these come with uh signed posters and two copies of the book wow and That's the final awesome. perk we got here is the big king perk and so the high price point is because good old Rod here is going to draw a 11 or a 14 by 17 commission to whatever spec the person wants. The person's also going to get three times physical books and all five of the posters. Um, we actually got our first king earlier this week, which is really exciting. Um, anyone who's interested in, you know, seeing Rod put to work, you, you definitely want to grab this king one and, Please. Um, we'll, yes, that will go a long way. You can see here, the pages are also showcased. And down here, you can see where uh, the posters are listed. So all the posters we're giving out, these are three of them. If you want all five, um, there's a few more, such as this one right here and this one right here but they're going to be full 11 by 17 we'll sign those so with getting that gold stamp you're essentially getting a variant cover because as te mentioned if even if this book ends up at your local lcs you will not be able to get that gold stamped version that you can only get through supporting the indiegogo campaign and we've seen in the past whether it's indiegogo or kickstarter those exclusive funding books have been the ones that have set the market on fire. So be on the lookout for that. Absolutely check that out. And make sure if you're talking value, it's, uh, what was it, uh, $20 to get in for that for that physical copy, correct, T.E.? So it's $15, it uh, comes with a $10 shipping, so it's a $25 price. $25. And then you have at $35, you have the ability to get two physical books plus the 11 by 17 sign poster. So there's some real value in that celebrity level tier. Yeah, yeah, no, no doubt. I mean, that, that, that should appeal to a lot of people right there. And just where you're screen sharing out there with that cover. I mean, that's, that's, that is awesome right there. I don't, there's no other word for it. And uh, it is very remis, reminiscent of what Jack said. It's got that Knights of the Golden Sun feel to it almost just by looking at these pages and, and, and looking at the artwork and man, I'm, I'm excited about it already. And I, I can't wait to see more already. All right. Knights of the golden sun. You got a book that's trading at $40 on the secondary market and was printed kind of as a mass distribution, although small print press here with Indiegogo, you're going to see an even lower print run and the potential if this book hits a, on the market similar to that one to do even more on the secondary market so that's why we wanted to bring this indiegogo campaign to you guys out there in the simplemans comics family as well as comicbookinvest.com and cbsi nation to get you in on the ground floor on a book you are essentially an investor in this book you're not just investing in a book on the aftermarket you're investing in the production of this book you're helping get this book made and for that you're getting these exclusive books which when you get them in your hands will no doubt have added value on the secondary market. Yeah, no, no doubt. I can, uh, I can agree with that, Jack. And I mean, it's the, the, the concept sounds awesome. And you talk about it investing and you have to go back to some of the things that he said earlier. Uh, I mean, it's a huge world right now. There, there's so many opportunities. And the fact that both of you guys were in the video game field it almost has that that video gameish look to it a little bit, you know. And and mm, totally. I'm sure if this is something that that caught on, I mean, it could go go that route in a hurry too, you know. So mm. I, I can imagine the 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 
opportunities are endless. And uh, from from an investing standpoint, when you're talking about investing something as little as twenty five dollars to get a physical copy, or or can invest up to, to five hundred, you know, I mean, that's pick your poison. And and I think you'll be uh, you it you have a, a somewhat safe safer bet than some of the other things that you see out there. Uh, yeah, I think Travis had this in mind. He he thought about the universe of Bluegrass going to be big. So you can see in different medias, like video games, movie, whatever. He, and I, I know that he you make this book happen. Uh, with the money of the Indiegogo, we can make this fast. Uh, concentrate only in producing the comic book and then stop and do another thing and get back to, to the comic book. And I know that he wants to make like seven issues and then do seven issues and then put it all together and offer on image comics. So the possibility to grow is very, very high. And I think we have quality in, in story and the art to achieve this. Well, Ron mentioned, if we far exceeded the minimum goal, uh, we're going to produce more than the one issue. The stress rewards say we'll produce up to seven depending on how much money we get into the campaign, but just the minimum funding goal was for this first double side or double sized issue. One other thing to note, let's see. I also want to point out why you have the screen up on the page. Can, can you oh, yeah. back to where you were just a minute ago? If you hadn't noticed, they have all their social networking accounts on their Indiegogo page. So you follow them on Twitter, follow them on Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn as well. So if you have questions about this book as well, I'm sure you can reach out to them. But make sure you guys check out this page on Indiegogo. It looks like a fantastic book, especially if you love that whole fantasy and epic type storyline. I, for one, am back in this book. I hope others will do too because I want to see this book get made. Absolutely, Brian. And you know I'm all about social media, managing CBSI and comicbookinvest.com social media. So we're talking Twitter at BB Comic Series. We're talking Facebook with Blue Bastion Studios, Instagram with Blue Bastion Studios, and on LinkedIn, you can find Travis-E-Marshall, and that's with two L's. And we will put links to all their social networking in the description of this video as well. I got one more thing I want to show you guys. This is a brand new piece. It's never been seen by anyone before. You're getting it for the first time. That's incredible. Yeah, I, I saw that earlier and I, I wanted you, I was hoping you were going back to that. Oh yeah, this is a more cinematic shot. I worked with an artist on Instagram named uh, Minea Junipura, who goes by Minstu Q. You see what I'm and, talking about? I can see this scene in a movie. I can see this scene in a game. I can see this scene in many places. See, I love what I love what Rod's talking about right there. We are mm -hmm. comicbookinvest.com. We talk about we're in the age of adaptation. If you want to make money in comics, you got to be talking movies, you got to be talking TV shows, and you got to be talking video games. And Rod is saying those magic words right now, and I absolutely agree. This image right here seems like it's made for the big screen. Yeah, yeah. I, th I think people don't, for my experience, I have a lot of experience in comic book, but people just start to think, oh, I know, I want to make a comic book. It's fine. It's good. But nowadays you are competing with video games, man. You are competing with VR. The new generation, they care about VR. So you have to produce images like that or universe like that to try to grab the attention of the younger readers, old guys like us, of course, you'll like it, but we need to need to bring uh, the new, new young readers to this market. And this is why I saw an image like that and I, I, can, I, can, almost, I can almost hear the sound of the run, you know what I mean? <laughs> Oh yeah. So this is the kind of thing that all the comic book artists and writers should think about when you produce a comic book, not just oh I want your comic book to give some autographs in a comic con. No, think about business. One of the guys that inspires me to be on this market is Todd McFarley. So I have this mind of Todd McFarley. I always had. Even when I was younger with 20 years old, I always produced comics that I can see bigger, like 
I, I know a phrase that say shoot to the star because if you drop, you drop in the clouds. So think big, don't think small, think big. And this image for me is beautiful, man, it's beautiful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, and it's, it's a great thing. Yeah, the, the, the comic book market is changing. And uh, so just the creator is changing with it is, is you know, uh, Jack, you, you said it one time, the day of the, the comic book owner uh, in sweatpants uh, talking trash is over, you know, it's a, it's a new day, a new world. And you look at some of these other titles that have had some somewhat success coming from the video games. You, you see a lot more of that now than, than you did in the past. It, 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 it used to be where, okay, it was, a, it was a video game. Now they're making it a comic, no big deal. Now it's drawing attention. It's drawing the speculators' attention. It's drawing a lot of attention because a lot of people are playing games first. You, you know, like uh, yeah, the Life yeah. is Strange book comes to mind uh, right off the rip. That was a video game that ended. The people were mad it, it ended. They, they, they killed off a character or, or, or something like that. And now they've brought that character back in a comic book and that issue is is highly solid so it's uh it's it's a whole nother another world and i'm glad you guys are tapping into that mm -hmm. yeah nice. i'm glad you guys are all picking up on the video game uh the fact that it could be a video game i mean i definitely have this in mind a lot of what i do and have done over the last 10 years working in games is bring movies and comic books to games. I've worked on a lot of movie games. Uh, and I definitely think there's a lot we could do with Blue Bash, and I'd love to bring it to as many platforms as we can. Uh, I'm, I just love being creative. And I have a great team that can help, you know, visualize everything we need. Yeah, and I think nowadays uh, is so much uh, possible because when I started, 20 years ago, if you don't publish by Marvin DC, that's it, over. Nobody you heard about you. That's it. Now the internet, YouTube, Instagram, pay posts on Instagram, on Facebook, you cannot reach many, many people. So many, if you have a good product, visually, story, you can achieve this kind of deals in TV or movie or video game. Uh, but you need to first to have a good product. And I think we have a special product there, a really cool comic book. Uh, yeah, and we need your help on Indiegogo, please. Absolutely. And now you mentioned the quality being there. We've heard, Rod, you mentioned Image Comics, Todd McFarlane. If we were looking for a, say, a small press publisher, an indie publisher that wanted to get involved with Blue Bash, do you guys have any in mind? Because this is the Indie Spotlight series show. We don't believe in that there's only two publishers business. We love Mad Cave Studios. We love Vault Comics. We love Scout yeah. Comics. Yeah. Are there any in mind that you have in mind that you would love to work with and get involved with Blue Bastion? I think a lot of the smaller publishers, I need to research more. Right now, we're kind of focused on creating the best comic possible, and we're really open to whatever publisher wants to really get behind our project. And that's what's most important. A lot of publishers might take it and not care as much about it. We just want to work with someone who is going to be passionate, as passionate as we are, really. And I think I think with Indiegogo can be easier to get close to this company. Um, as soon as you have the book printed, colored with letters, art, you can. It's like a portfolio. You can see, get in these publishers and say, "Look, this is it. This is what we want." Then you can deal and negotiate. I, I heard about. Uh, I don't know if, if they get indie comics or what the situation, but uh, Skybound, that yeah. is a publisher from the Walking Dead guy, right? Yep. And I heard that it started to get some indie comics here and there. Uh, but yeah, today is many publishers, in, not just in American markets, but around the world. 
So yeah, but but as Travis said, now we are focused on finishing this book, at least this first issue, and then we see what what happens. So definitely CBSI Nation, Simple Ones Comics family. Check out this Indiegogo. Get in on the ground floor. There's a lot of ways you can invest your money today. Everybody's throwing their money in cryptocurrency, stocks, all of that. But you can invest in comic books and not just in the comics you buy on the LCS, in the production of a book. Get in on the production. Get your physical copies in hand. And when this book takes off, who knows? And if you're watching out there, Mark London. James Haig, the Wassel Brothers. Let's pay attention to what these guys are talking about because this book has the quality behind it. Um, and I agree with what Rod said. This is essentially a portfolio here and it shows the work these two guys are doing. I can appreciate that you guys got your head down, focused on your book. You're not worried about that portion of it, which is where I guess where you should be at this point in the game. You guys are trying to get that book funded and trying to get that book made. But I see such unlimited potential um, so definitely all of those, uh, all of those publishers out there who have worked with us in the past, we're giving you a little bit of an opportunity here. We're showing you something really early stages that could be huge. Yeah. And, and you mentioned that now I was thinking, man, I wish I could buy some original art from Walking Dead back then. Imagine the price now, right? Of Way the, back the when. First yeah, when they started, nobody cares because it was a black and white comic book and nobody cared about zombies. And said, nah, this won't happen. Look at where they, they get, man. Well, they get. who knows? Because 10 years from now, someone might be doing an interview going, man, imagine if I would have bought some of that Rod Looper yeah. OA back in the day. I hope, yeah, I hope. Right. And that's the point. That's why, we, that's why we wanted to cover Kickstarters. That's why we wanted to cover Indiegogo campaigns. Because it's a rare opportunity for you to get in on those early stages, for you to get in before anyone even knows about this. And, and you can kind of be that first. Speculators love being that first to know kind of guy. Love to be the ones who can brag. I, I knew about it when nobody knew about it. And now you get to get in here. We're at 12% funded. You can jump in now. Let's get this book funded. Let's get this book produced. Let's get this book in our hands I agree with what Brian said. I'm in on this book. I, Andy, I know you're in. Oh, so, I'm, I'm in 100%. Absolutely. So CBSI Nation, Simpleman's Comics family out there, you guys told us you wanted to see this kind of content. You wanted to see these kinds of projects. And we didn't want to just bring anyone to you. The quality is here. And that's what's key. And you heard Andy make that comparison to Knights of the Golden Sun. Knights of the Golden Sun was a book that People weren't aware of when we started talking about it before we produced our exclusive variant. We hope that maybe uh, Blue Bastion can be a book that we can get to the point that we can produce an exclusive variant cover. So, you know, anything is possible, and that's the beauty of comics. And uh, Indiegogo really has the spirit of the Indie Spotlight series. It's the type of thing where it's it's guys out here creating something for, their, for themselves. They're not going in the typical kind of comics system. Uh, they've got complete control over it and it allows them to kind of do what they need to do. And, but they need your help. They need you guys to fund this book. They need you guys to go to the Indiegogo, check it out, check out those tiers. And uh, like Brian said, you've got the opportunity to get Rod Looper exclusive, you know, original art, get on the ground floor, $490. This is before it's going to be $2,000 at every comic book convention you ever see. So get it now, get it, get it while you can. And mm -hmm. even those, even those lesser um, uh, milestones where you can get five signed posters and a couple books, you know, you're not going to be able to match those prices on the open market later uh, once this book is out and and people are aware of it. You know, uh, and if this is not a project you've heard of, if you're not familiar with it, that's the point. We're bringing it to you early before you've heard of it. We're trying to introduce you to it. And uh, if you wait till the market's talking about it, you're too late. At that point, you're chasing and you're not getting the best value. This is that early, early value that we're bringing to you right now. And just to add to that, you know, it's this. Think of these two guys' background. I'll say it again. This is not just a comic book you're you're investing in. You you can look at these two guys and and read between the lines and 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 not so much read between the lines to see that this thing has a lot of opportunities. So I will say that, and uh, 
like you said, Jack, this is one that I'm, I'm invested in uh, from here uh, after seeing all this uh, tonight. And I hope everyone out there watching, uh, it feels the same way. And uh, I really don't see how you couldn't after seeing all that. So this is a variant cover that our colorist Artisita did all himself. Uh, the, the logo is created by our letterer, Priscilla Salsa. Yeah, he draw This too. one just blew me away because of how photorealistic it is. Uh, he yeah. really made them look. Uh, Looks like John Cena. Alive. Yeah, we yeah. get that a lot. I see that. I like that. I do too. That it is. The, the poster from the movie. It's mm -hmm. the poster for the movie. Absolutely. There you go. There you go that I was watching an interview from Todd McFarley and he says something that I, we almost forgot. The first thing that we notice in the comic book is that it's cool, visually cool. We grow up and we forget about it. We think too much, we think too much. Oh no, this is impossible. The guy can run this way. We, we, we lose this kind of thing. And he was saying that when he contracted Greg Capullo and Scott Gambage to make some images for Spal 300. He said to them, "Look, I want to make some image that you that will be appeal for the 15 years old guy that you were. You know what I mean? To blow the mind of the 15 years old guy. And you mentioned, man, this sword is cool. That's it. It's simple." Yep. Not give need to invent too much concept. This is for the adults. We need to get back some time to to yeah. child. Right, mind. It's, it's it's comic books, and we we mentioned John Cena as the character kind of evokes that look of John Cena. It's just like pro wrestling. You gotta you gotta kind of suspend your disbelief for a minute. Um, you've got to just totally. in, enjoy it for a moment. And I agree with what Rod said. When you first look at the book, you get you get this, that visual appeal. The art is is fantastic. Um, and then definitely you guys, your entire team seems to really be working really well together because you've got incredible colors, like bright, vibrant colors. I love the, the use of the different colors and the way they contrast with each other. And then TE, you can tell that he has put some serious thought into this world from talking about building a map a la Game of Thrones to just the way that he speaks about the character and about the world and the motivation and working with the animals and the gauntlets and all of that. This is a well thought out project and seeing you guys collaborate and come together is what makes me believe that we have a winner here. Yeah, collaboration is one of my key values. With this project, since we've been even working on these pages, I've already worked with eight or nine different artists that I met on Instagram to help with promotional pieces. And I just really enjoy working and collaborating with all these up and coming artists. Uh, I'd love to continue expanding as the book keeps going. And you guys mentioned a variant cover. I'd love to have you come produce one. I, I just love collaborating with people who have the same passion. Yeah, that's the beauty of comic books, man. When you when you hit that, it's like a rock band, you know. Everything's go cool. the battery, the guitar play, the vocal goes smoothly and nice, and we have a beautiful song. I love that. I love that analogy, Rod. That's that's, that's a great one, like a rock band, because it takes the whole team to put it together. A lot okay. of times, you know, how many times are we talking about a book, Brian? And we're talking about it on the Bolo show. And uh, I don't want to name a book and kind of throw somebody under the bus, but there's been books that we've talked about in the past where we're like, you know, I really love this story, but the art just doesn't, doesn't carry what the writing does. Or we, on the other side where we're like, man, the art is fantastic, but I don't know where the writer's going with this story. And the key is when everybody's working in harmony and everything's in sync, it's just like a rock band where you're hitting that perfect chord when, when that lead singer is belting out that tune. And uh, that's when you connects with you as an audience member. And I really think that, that that you hit it right there with what we get from comic books when you're flipping through a book and you just get it on all accords. Um, to kind of bring up a big two book we just talked about this week, Absolute Carnage uh, from Marvel is a book where I said, that's the feel that I got where it was like, man, this is incredible art, 
man, this story really has me. I love these unique panels. And um, so it's great to see, you know, indie publishers and indie, indie creators out here trying to do that, trying to hit that on all cylinders um, and doing it the right way rather than just rushing a book to market. I like the fact that I tried to push you guys on publisher and you guys were like, no, nah, we're just trying to focus on our book and do our own thing. That's awesome because that's what's going to bring the quality. Let them come to you. That's why I'm yeah. out here saying, yeah. Wassel Brothers, yeah. Mark London, James Hake, pay attention, guys. I like it. Well, guys, I, I just want to say thank you guys for coming on here tonight and just giving us the wealth of information and uh, showing us all the all the tools to go go invest in this book now. There's a, a lot of opportunity with it, and uh, I can't thank you guys enough for coming on and, and sharing that with us. Uh, yeah, for me, man, thank you so much for this interview. It was so much fun to talk about the project. It's a privilege to work with art, and I know that I'm a privileged guy uh, for so many years. And I have a, it's so nice to meet you, uh, Marshall, and, and he invited me to the project, and I believed in the project. Uh, I wasn't here. I won't be here if I don't believe it. Um, and yeah, man, thank you. I need we need support you from your fans on Indiegogo. Believe in us, uh, believe in our story. You can check our story on Instagram, Twitter for where we came. And yeah, Comkey Books Forever. That's it. Thank you guys for the interview. Your guys are awesome. Brian, Jack, Andy, I really appreciate you hosting us today. It's been a blast, and I hope we can stay in touch and keep working together. And as Jack mentioned, we all of our social media is on our Indiegogo page. We'd love to hear from you for anyone interested. Uh, I'm just trying to collaborate really and um, work with my fans, with fans of the book, with other artists. Just continue building relationships with everyone. So please reach out and please uh, consider backing us today. We really need the support so we can finish this book on time. All right, so Simpleman's Comics family, CBSI Nation. Now you guys said you wanted more unique content. You wanted us to hit areas of the market that no one else is hitting. And that's what we're doing right here. We're talking Indiegogo. Now, whether you're an investor, this is an opportunity for you to diversify your holdings. We're not just talking big two. We're not just talking small print press. We're talking getting in on the ground floor of an Indiegogo campaign that you have the opportunity right now to go invest in this book, get yourself some copies and be ready because this could be quite possibly the next big thing. Also, we know a lot of people who follow us and watch our channel. You guys are aspiring artists. Listen to what TE said, reach out to him on social media, let him know what you can do for him. It's the spirit of collaboration and you never know what you could be involved in. And also, I know there's some publishers out there who watch us and pay attention to us. This is a great opportunity, whether you want to back this book yourself or get in on the ground floor and help produce this book. Pay attention to these guys because these guys are doing it for the love of comics. And we find out more often than not that this business is all about good people and passion. And these are definitely two good guys who have the passion for the product. And oftentimes, that is the key to success. So I want to thank you guys, Rod, TE, your entire team, even the people who were not here who put in all the hard work on this book. Thank you for being here on the Indie Spotlight Series show. I appreciate you giving us the opportunity to talk to you guys and to check out this book early. Perfect. And to follow up with what Jack just said, I can't thank you guys enough as well for being on here. Also, as I said before, link to that Indiegogo campaign and all their social networking links will be in the description of this video. Rod, TE, thank you so much. As everyone else has said, we really appreciate you guys coming on the channel tonight. Love the opportunity to talk about this book. As everyone knows who watches this channel, Simple Man's Comics is big on independent, especially creator-owned. And this is one of those grassroots efforts where people have the opportunity to get on to and get on early. And if you can't back it, at least share that link out with your friends because there might be other comic book lovers out there. Let's get the word out on this book and let's get it produced. So on behalf of me, Andy, Jack, thank you for coming on this show. And for you guys watching, thank you for watching another episode of the CBSI Indie Spotlight Series. <laughs>